So, you want to teach English in China? Let's talk about that. A lot of people who are coming to China to teach English are first time teachers and they don't really know what to do. I'm here to help you. So I've created this video and a, a whole new channel actually that is over there and we will talk about what you need to know as a teacher in China. So please head over to that channel, hit subscribe, and I will be uploading more and more regular content over the coming weeks about teaching English. So one of the main concerns is class size. The class size is a big problem for a lot of these first time teachers because they look at a classroom like this and they're like, oh my God, that's so many chairs and so many people. It's like a like an auditorium or something, it's crazy. So let's talk about how to manage these class sizes. Because you think to yourself, oh my God, I could never organize so many students. I could never remember names. I could never get it right. Well, you can actually. So generally speaking, this will be your setup. You will have a computer screen that comes down here. You got a whiteboard, blackboard, whatever. I've got another video showing a typical Chinese classroom. You can check that video out here. No problem. So think about the student's perspective. They're sitting here, they're looking at you. What can you do to keep their attention? Well, you do have to make an engaging lesson where you get the students talking a lot or moving up and around. I'll make a video about that particular bit in the next couple of weeks. It'll be good. It is pretty daunting the first time you do it, but that's what I'm here for. So what I like to do, and a lot of teachers like to do, is put the students into groups. They will take random students or let students sit with their friends I like to pick random students and they'll put them in groups of maybe four to six people. Four for maybe a smaller class, six for a really big class, like, you know, 30 um, and under is pretty small class and maybe 40, 50 bigger classes, 70 students, who that's a whole nother ball game. Um, I have done it and groups does help, but it's, it's tough. So you've got a group, let's say of six, you've got three chairs here, three chairs here, bam, six people. I'll put them all there, I'll number them off. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All the ones go over here, all two, three, four, and that's their group assignment for that semester or the half semester, whatever you like. And then what I do next is I pass around a seating chart and I have them write their name in the seating chart. I designed this seating chart based on the layout of the classroom. This is one of my rough drafts, but here's a final draft up here on the screen. And that is where they sit and that is how I mark their grades. So I have an Excel spreadsheet with every student's name and I have different little codes for what the students are doing every single week. So I might put a check mark right here. I may put an L if they come in late. I'll put a C if they're speaking Chinese. I'll put an A if they're absent. I'll put a P for pronunciation. Then I'll put a check or an X to indicate they have good pronunciation or et cetera, et cetera. I'll put an X if they're just not doing anything, not contributing. I'll put an LR if they are a leader in their group that particular week. I have a system so that no matter what we're doing, no matter who it is, you know, this person in this chair, they get this mark because of what they're doing. They get extra points for doing good things. They lose points for doing bad things. It's a very simple system. There are a few things with this system. You have to be very, very disciplined and you have to be paying very close attention to what students are doing in order to give them, you know, marks and grades every single week. It is tough. It is very tough. And also if you're giving all these marks and at the same time you're trying to give feedback to every individual student, it's almost impossible. So you can only give limited feedback because there's a lot of marks that you have to make. And also in the beginning, students can get their friends to kind of fill in for them. And you know, you can't really do anything about that until you get to know their faces, which will take, you know, three or four weeks or so. But I find that to be a great system. It works for me. I love it. It's a way to give individual marks, individual grades. Students can know that they are being watched. You can put it up on the screen before class gets started. They can check it themselves. You give them the feedback and it works. You know, I have somewhere around 400 to 500 students every semester. And although it does take a while to do it every single week, to put in those marks and to do all that, it is worth it because when a student comes in and they say, why did I get this grade in my, in my class? Like, well, because you didn't do this during this week, you did this this week, and you didn't do this for two weeks in a row. You have a justification for what you're doing. You have notes. And that is the most important thing is you're holding students accountable and you have a justification for the grades that you are giving. You have physical proof on you know, uh, the seating chart that you can write there. You can have it in your computer, do whatever. And of course, like I'm a pretty relaxed teacher in class, but they know that when it comes to grades, I ain't messing around. Like this is 
my job. It's the only thing that I do. So take it seriously. And generally speaking, that is how you manage those large classes. You can take attendance, no problem. You can make individual grades, no problem. You can um, have them in groups, build a little group camaraderie, and uh, you can have them mix and match. You can have them one week after you take attendance, have them switch places. You can have them go talk to other groups. You can have them debate other groups. You can have them do all this, and it's awesome. It is awesome. So please, if you are nervous about your large classes, try that. I think you'll find it'll make your life a lot easier. So I hope this has answered any questions you had about large classes. If it has not, leave a comment down below and we'll talk about it, okay? And I may even make a new video based on your suggestions. And speaking of suggestions, please leave as many as you like down in the comments below again. And I think that'll about do it. So please subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment. And I am on Instagram. So if you wanna see any photos from my classes, from my university, whatever, follow me on Instagram, Austin in China. All right, thank you very much. See you all next time.